Hi, my name is Goldbeer and let's start with Tunguska The Visitation. This is without a doubt one of the most underrated games I have played recently. In this survival adventure RPG you will embark on a journey to the zone teeming with weirdest anomalies. You will uncover the dark secrets of Tunguska from the Soviet era and venture across dangerous locations. Grim villages, abandoned facilities, toxic swamps and ominous tunnels to discover the truth about the mysterious Tunguska event in 1908. When I played it I had a feeling that Tunguska is just like classic Fallout only with combat taking place in real time. Also, the game draws heavy inspiration from Stalker games and the roadside picnic story. He will engage in firefights or use stealth. The game offers many mechanics on how to take down adversaries one by one and feel like a true ninja. And if you don't want to dwell stealthily in the shadows, keep in mind that the game offers 50 types of weapons, 20 ammo types and 13 types of weapon attachments. Also from my own experience, I can assure you that here you will find hundreds of different items and your inner looter will be satisfied. This game may not look like much at the first glance, but it has an incredible depth. You can even grow potatoes. It has a perk-based skill system and lets you freely solve problems in any creative ways you can come up with. For example, you can even lie that you completed the mission and take the reward anyway. Game is made by a solo American developer. And that is really impressive achievement. You have my all recommendations. Control Ultimate Edition. A corruptive presence has invaded the Federal Bureau of Control, and only you have the power to stop it. The world around you is now your weapon in an epic fight to annihilate an ominous enemy across the deep and unpredictable environments. Containment has failed, humanity is at stake, so it's time to kick some paranormal ass. SCP vibes are really strong here. To be fair, this game feels like you are in a dream all the time. Well, nightmare to be exact, because everything is changing all the time and not for good. The game is not scary, but it's ominous, that's for sure. People on Steam are saying that the story is very good, the game itself is out of the ordinary and it has some really cool puzzles to solve. So a bit of everything for everyone. A Plague Tale Innocence. He will take control of younger Misha and her little brother Hugo in a journey through the darkest hours of history. Haunted by Inquisition soldiers and surrounded by unstoppable swarms of rats, you will struggle to survive against overwhelming odds. Dead, rotten bodies lay everywhere and rats, oh, those creatures can and will eat anyone alive who does not carry a light source. As I always say, this is a bit unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, rats are no vampires. I used to own one, it liked bathing in the sun rays. Well, what if those are vampire rats? Um, I never actually thought about that. Anyway, keep in mind that the atmosphere here is grim and dark, so if you are a sensitive person, it may prove a challenge to play. Game tend to pull the ropes of emotion, and if you let your guard down and allow it to do its dark job, it will control you like a puppet. But in general, all that darkness is cool and original, keeping in mind all those airy fairy unicorn games people are used to play these days. King Arthur, Knight's Tale. This is a cool hybrid between turn-based games like XCOM and traditional character-centric CRPGs. You'll find diverse battle maps where you will have to position yourself to avoid shield walls and flank your enemies. Also, use covers against archers, make use of the terrain, hide in the foliage and surprise your enemies with your endless wisdom. Knight's Tale is a modern retelling of a classic story with a heavy touch of dark fantasy tropes, a twist on the traditional tales of chivalry and a bearded wizard with a friendly smile. Mile. You will encounter nothing like that here. Night's Tale is grim dark and really refreshing on your eyes, tired from all these colorful games nowadays. Although keep in mind that all your characters are expendable and if they die they will stay dead forever. Meaning that the game is leaning to the hardcore and may not be very easy for you. Bioshock Infinite as the first two parts, this is an immersive first-person shooter sim with a wonderful single-player story. While the first and second Bioshock games were set underwater, this time you go high into the sky, to the city among the clouds named Columbia. The year is 1912, and you have to rescue a mysterious girl or die trying. Well, knowing you, the latter option is more likely. Oh, come on, I'm kidding, you are great, never doubt that. Now subscribe. Anyway, the flying city is a beautiful and vibrant world that holds a very dark secret. Here you can rip apart time and space to shape the battlefield and turn the tide in combat by pulling weapons, turrets and other resources out of thin air, throw explosive fireballs, shoot lightning and release murders of crows. Game has more than 90% of positive reviews and is a real gem every first-person shooter lover should play. Aliens Fireteam Elite 
Have you ever wanted to be a protagonist in the Alien movie? Well, I doubt that, I really do. And if yes, w what is wrong with you? Anyway, here, after so many fear-infused hours in Alien Isolation, you can finally get some revenge on these terrifying creatures. You will kill hundreds of them, so it's nothing like the movies. Although it's really fun to play if you have a friend or two. You can play in single player as well, but I assure you that if you want full experience, you will have to find some friends. I know, that may be Mission Impossible, but you can try anyway. You don't need real friends, all you need is some Discord channel with the same minded people. So here you'll be exploring some friendly planet filled with friendly fauna and live in harmony all together. Except you don't. This game is a carnage where you will have to battle through hordes of different types of xenomorph, customize your character and gear and level up as you try to contain this ever-growing threat. I especially like the diversity of enemies in this game, they really took their time to create some nasty monsters. The game itself is basically left for dead just with aliens. I think it's great, and 81% of Steam reviews are also positive. Ancestors Legacy this is a real-time strategy game influenced by historical events of the Middle Ages. Ancestors Legacy combines resource management and base building with large-scale squad-based battles across vast battlefields. It is all rendered in great detail with Unreal Engine 4. You'll experience medieval bloodshed and can enjoy a cinematic action camera that puts you right in the middle of the battle. People on Steam are saying that Ancestors Legacy is easy to learn and it's like chess. It involves a lot of strategy, so the more you play, the better you become. Basically here a lot of options to create the enemy lie in the plain side, but only the master strategists can see them all. So the more you play, the easier the game will seem. Or not, you know, we all have our limits and sometimes our limit is below the requirements of a victory. Assassin's Creed Origins Ancient Egypt, a land of majesty and intrigue, is disappearing in a ruthless fight for power. He will unveil dark secrets and forgotten myths as you go back to one founding moment. The origins of Ass, Assassin's Brotherhood. People are talking that this is one of the best Assassin's Creed games they have ever played. It has a great combat system, almost no bugs, and only bad comments are from grumpy old dudes who can't cope with the fact that this is now a role-playing game. Although I must admit that if you are not a fan of an ancient Egypt, this setting can seem a bit boring. Some settings are really overused and not interesting anymore. You know, like Egyptian, Ancient Greek, Viking or Latvian mythology. You know, especially the Latvian one, with all that Lachplesis and Zirga Galva everywhere you go. Ashes of Singularity he will battle for control of the galaxy as the advanced human race or their eternal foes, aliens named the Substrate. He will dive into massive battles with thousands of units in huge, really detailed maps and that distinguishes this game from many other RTSs. Although keep in mind that these amounts of units in Ashes of Singularity require massive computing power. Not as massive as your mama. You can play the game alone or online with friends in ranked or unranked multiplayer mode or play it by yourself against a powerful non-cheating AI in skirmish or campaign mode. That is actually great, a well-made and, just like your wife, let's hope, non-cheating AI is kinda rare because it's hard to make. So developers tend to cut it out and replace it with a fake AI instead that gets unlimited resources and can see you through the fog of war. It's like giving see-through closed glasses to the random pervert. But not this time, Ashes of Singularity doesn't cut corners. Or AIs. People on Steam are saying that the game has a fun level editor and the amount of lasers is in Never too high. Astroneer. Game is set during that 25th century intergalactic age of discovery. The astroneers explore the frontiers of outer space, risking their lives in harsh environments to unearth rare discoveries and unlock the mysteries of the universe itself. In this space sandbox adventure, you can work together with other players to build custom bases above or below the ground, create vehicles to explore a vast solar system, and use terrain to create anything you can imagine. So basically, you are invading beautiful planets with beautiful nature and making an industrial hell out of them. Yeah, screw nature, the galaxy is full of it. People on Steam are saying that here you are your own worst enemy. You will fall off the cliffs, touch deadly plants and forget something at your base that is half a galaxy away. Yeah, anyway, very positive reviews are here for a reason. Almost everyone loves the game and there is a huge chance that you will love it as well. Beautiful Desolation 
I can honestly say that this is one of the coolest games I have ever played. It may sound silly because this is actually a point and click game, but it was made so well I was very impressed during my playthrough and I still am. They wanted to create something original, something different and never seen before. And I can clearly say that they succeeded. I promise you that story-wise you never played anything like that. The whole game feels like some vet surrealistic sci-fi dream of Carl Sagan, with weird characters, weird conversations and weird atmosphere in general that somehow still makes sense. If you ever read anything by Philip K. Dick you will understand what I'm talking about. And this game is pure art, but it's hard. It won't guide you by a hand or penis and puzzles you have to solve are no joke. So prepare to be mentally humiliated and deal with the fact that your IQ is not as high as you think it is. Black Mesa this is actually a Half-Life, just with better graphics and better, you know, everything. Keep in mind that this is not just a simple remaster, this is a quality remake that expands the scope of the original and massively improves its final chapters. Game is made by fans and it is made so well that it is an owner of overwhelmingly positive reviews. And to be honest, today Black Mesa is the best way to experience Half-Life. No clunky old-school graphics, no compatibility problems, great gameplay and a really interesting suspenseful story. To say short, Half-Life is awesome, and Black Mesa may be the greatest way for you to play it. People on Steam are saying that Black Mesa is one of the best remakes ever made, and the game doesn't give you any reason to disagree with these wise words. Blacktail. You play as Yaga, a 16-year-old girl accused of witchcraft and expelled from medieval settlement. Well, I know what I would be doing after that. Definitely not helping poor folk from the aforementioned village to heal their sick cattle. No, I would rather secretly put pineapple into their potato salad. <laughs> anyway, here you will decide the fate of the land and its inhabitants, and witness the impact of your decisions on your skills through an implemented morality system. Craft arrows and potions, hunt wild animals, animals and gather resources to survive in the ominous woods. People on Steam are saying that the game feels more mature than the visuals it provides and the story is really dark and captivating. Card Shark something really refreshing this time. God Shark is an adventure game full of cunning, intrigue and delectable deceit. You will enter a world where you will need to play your opponents better than you play your cards. For example, when I play cards, I often cheat. For me, not winning is not an option, that's why I never play cards with strangers. You know, I avoid getting shot. But in this game, everything is way more serious. You will have to cheat your way to the top of 18th century French society, master deceptions using card marking, false shuffles, decks switching, false deals and more. Use your ill-gotten gains to buy your way into the closed world of high stakes or even to a table of a king himself. And yeah, please, don't get caught while cheating a king. Chronicon. It looks like a simple 2D game, but an overwhelmingly positive review score should really grab your attention. Here you'll find 5 large acts, each with their own storyline, 4 unique classes, procedurally generated dungeons, local co-op for up to 4 players, remote play together support, 400 unique items, 900 skills, abilities and perks, hardcore mode and zillion other things. For many people, this is the best action RPG game they have ever tried in their lives, and for some it's very simple and boring. So basically it still can disappoint you, but the chances are really slim. And the price is nice, don't think twice. Against the Storm this is a roguelite city builder set in a gloomy fantasy world. Artistically, this is one of the coolest RTS city builder games I have seen lately, except one thing. Here it never stops raining. And I hate rain. In my country, Lithuania, rain is always cold. Even in the summer and in any other season, it feels like an ice needles piercing my puny body straight to the bone. Also, I wear glasses, so it's a thing that's really hard to love. Anyway, here you are a pioneer sent into the wilds to establish and manage new settlements in inhabited by smart beavers, lizards and humans. Your goal is to survive long enough and gather the valuable resources necessary to rebuild and upgrade your city. It's the only safe haven against the blight storm, a vile cycle of destruction ravaging everything in its path. Crisis Remastered. I remember when I played some Crisis game for the first time about 100 years ago. The best part for me was that all your enemies here are all super powerful and mighty, but you are even more powerful and even more mighty. The feeling of power was great. Many years have passed and I still remember being an absolutely awesome killing machine. So the franchise is remastered now, the graphics are enhanced and thus the recommended requirements for this game are really high. Well, it's a game from 2007 after all, just with better visuals. I'm not 
an expert in computer parts, most of the names say nothing to me. I become an expert only before buying a new PC, you know, like most of us. So I just googled the recommended graphics card and I saw that its price was almost 300 euros. That is not what most of the world considers cheap. You know, you can buy a whole Nintendo Switch for a similar price. Anyway, the game is great. If you like first-person shooters, you will almost definitely like Rises as well. Curse of the Dead Gods This game is obviously oriented for the fans of Hades, or as one commentator on Steam said, Curse of the Dead Gods plays as Hades and looks like Darkest Dungeon. Honestly, it's a fair comparison. So in this game you will seek untold riches, eternal life and divine powers. It will lead you to this a cursed temple, a seemingly infinite labyrinth of bottomless pits, deadly traps and monsters. Well, the rest is self-explanatory. The game also introduces a cool mechanic of unique curses, they influence each attempt putting a twist on every action. Although keep one thing in mind, you will have to parry a lot and that souls-like mechanic sometimes is very annoying. Otherwise it's a great game, 86% of reviews on Steam are positive. Darkest Dungeon in this challenging turn-based roguelite RPG, you will recruit and train heroes and send them to battle in a variety of dungeons. Yeah, as always, send others to do your own job. The interesting part is that these said heroes are very, you know, human. In game they will battle not only enemies but also stress, fear and lack of potato salad. By which I mean hunger. So you will uncover strange mysteries and pit the heroes against an array of fearsome monsters. Game may not look like it's a lot of fun, but it is, believe me. Even though people People love this game, at times it can seem punishing and unfair. But in general, Darkest Dungeon is fun if you like numbers, strategy, and turn based combat. Also, players are seeing many similarities with HP Lovecraft stories, like The Alchemist and famous Call of Cthulhu as well. Not to mention overall dark and gloomy vibes. Darkwood if you could imagine a Lovecraftian forest with all the horrors in it, Darkwood checks all the marks. It is heavily inspired by, for example, Color Out of Space and even has some easter eggs in this field. When I played it, I felt that Kratos probably took a lot of inspiration from Stephen King as well, who is himself a fan of Lovecraft and you can feel the influence in many of his novels, starting from madness infusing Shining to the horrors of the unknown in the mist. So the Darkwood makes you feel that you are trying to survive in one of these stories. Creepy monsters in inhabitants and ever-changing woods surround your every step. By day you collect resources and explore the area, but by night you must barricade yourself in a safe place because various beasts of horror will try to make you, you know, less alive. So every night is a battle for survival, and every day is another chance to make your fortress stronger. Story is great, the gameplay is great, and the game is simply a must-play. Deep Rock Galactic this is a 1 to 4 players first person shooter featuring badass space dwarfs and 100% destructible environments. Here you can play alone or work together with other players as a team to dig, explore, and fight your way through a massive cave system filled with hordes of deadly enemies and valuable resources. Pick some powerful guns like flamethrowers, gatling guns, portable platform launchers, and show those puny aliens who's the boss. Dwarfs may be small, but they are really powerful. We in Lithuania have a saying. Neogis. Or smoggies. Meaning not the size, but the punch is what really matters. And your punch is really, you know, probably weak in real world, but really impactful for the alien population in these dangerous caves. People on Steam are talking that there is no reason not to play this game, and I have to agree. Show those monsters the true meaning of extinction. Rock and stone, baby. Detroit, become human. Here, decisions will dramatically alter how the game's intense, branching narrative plays out. Your choices really matter, not like in real life. Basically, the whole game is built around your choices. You can't do anything here except to choose what to do in certain situations. Well, also you move around a little and search for clues, but that's kinda it. And every decision you make, no matter how small, affects the outcome of the story. And in this game, no playthrough will be exactly the same. You can replay again and again to discover a totally different conclusion, sometimes absolutely absolutely unexpected one. Well, let's be honest, you probably won't do that many times, but it's nice to know that the ending you got is really unique. Also, you can try the free demo version on Steam. Doom Eternal Definitely, this is one of the most entertaining first-person shooter games ever. Here, Hell's army has invaded Earth, and you must show those puny demons the way home. And by the way home, I mean you have to splash their intestines all over the place, walk in their blood and be as awesome as humanly possible. There are only a few games with such entertaining combat as Doom Eternal, but it also has a big flaw almost everybody hates. That is platforming. Yeah, here you occasionally have to jump over rivers of lava, climb walls and make precision 
and leaps over and over again. That stuff is completely not cool when you play in the first person. I don't know why John Romero decided to ditch the Doom franchise and instead went and made Empire of Sin with only 49% of positive reviews on Steam, but I can feel with my butt that if he was in charge, the platforming part of Doom Eternal would be gone. Anyway, I do recommend the game, the price is fantastic. Dungeons 3 you will be able to unleash your dark side by creating a unique underground dungeon from an array of rooms, traps and structures. You can raise a pretty despicable army here. Your goal, of course, is to corrupt the land and destroy all things cute or even remotely good. Yes, you can visit the overworld here and, yes, let the terror thrive. The game has randomly generated levels so it has great replayability. Isn't it awesome, friend? Don't you think so, friend? Notice how I called you a friend? It's because you are subscribed to my channel, right? Right? Anyways, people on Steam are saying that this game has tons of easter eggs and nerdy references. It's like it was made for us. Yeah, it was literally made for us, you genius. Oh, shut up. Expeditions Rome. This is an indirect sequel of Expeditions Viking and it has already accumulated a very positive review score on Steam. So here you can create your own Roman legacy, customize your character's look, gender, class and skills to match your playstyle and role-playing fantasy. Although I doubt that you will find a slider for a ding-dong size, like we have in Cyberpunk, that would be a pleasant surprise. So here, as in the prequel, you will engage in tactical turn-based combat powered by an extensive skill-based action system, where every weapon changes your potency on the battlefield. This is a great game for the people who like to use the tiny organ between our ears. People on Steam are saying that this is an interesting, a bit underrated RPG game that takes a huge amount of time to beat, but gameplay almost never gets boring. Ancestors The Humankind Odyssey this is a really original and truly amazing game where you play as an ape. Yeah, your journey starts 10 million years ago and by then we still shared our ancestors with gorillas and chimpanzees. Our last common ancestor with the apes, chimpanzees to be exact, is known to be roughly about 5 million years old. So you start as an ape and over the years evolve into an early human. The whole game spans from 10 million to 2 million years ago. Your task is for you and your tribe not to die and not to choose the path of extinction. The future of humanity is is in your hands, like literally. As developers say, evolution was not written in stone. Your decisions will shape how you will overcome obstacles, increase your species and what knowledge you will pass on to future generations. You can focus on specific attributes or choose a more balanced approach to survival. Your clan's ability to survive will be directly impacted by your decisions and choices, making each player's experience a unique one. It's a wonderful game reminding us that we are just starting to go on our evolutionary path as human species. 2 million years is nothing. Dinosaurs existed for 165 million years before they all died out. Except the birds, of course, add another 65 million years to that big number. That is a huge difference. Not as huge as your mama, though. Dome Keeper. The discount is not very high, but the game is very affordable anyway, people behind the project are not greedy. Domekeeper has about 90% of positive reviews, so it is obviously a hidden gem you may want to try. Well, a nice polished rock at least. This is a roguelike survival miner where you will defend your dome from wave after wave of monsters. You will use the time between each attack to dig beneath the surface and search of valuable resources and artifacts, and use them carefully to choose powerful upgrades and bonuses. People on Steam are talking that the game is very polished, rich and imaginative. It's all you need for your free time. Well, this and potato salad. Firewatch this is one of the most immersive games I have ever played. Firewatch is a single-player first-person mystery set in a Wyoming wilderness. The year is 1989. You are a man named Henry who has retreated from his messy life to work as a fire lookout in a lush forest. An especially hot and dry summer is a great thing everywhere, except where you work. One smoking cigarette butt or one shard of broken glass and this beauty can become a real hell on earth in seconds. This is a game for adults with adult conversation themes. Despite that it is colorful and beautiful and all, it's not made for kids in any way. Deep Sky Derelicts it is an original combination of turn-based strategy and RPG and rich with tactical card combat and roguelike elements. You'll explore derelict alien ships, fight loot and upgrade your gear. And all that is presented in a distinctive retro-futuristic comic book aesthetic style. I think that the comic style of the game is absolutely awesome and as a fan of horror sci-fi comics, I melted in my place like a snowman in between hot boobies. People on Steam are saying that this is a really decent dungeon crawler with incredibly cool 
combat style. The game will take about 20 hours to beat, so it can be a nice investment into your upcoming leisure time. This is a single-player, non-combat cyberpunk RPG. You are a game detective who solves crimes inside virtual worlds by using your wits to gather information from your witnesses and suspects. Also get to the bottom of deceptive schemes, save lives and investigate the relationships between virtual worlds and their inhabitants. The game continually adapts to your choices and never judges, just like your dog does. Also, it sounds a bit like Disco Elysium and that's a great thing. Although keep in mind that here you will not find any battles and no fighting is available. Pick it up only if you like to read and carefully analyze sentences in dialogues. Desperados 3 you can kill quietly with a knife or take out multiple foes with your revolvers. I especially like the knife part. It somehow feels more personal and, of course, requires more skill. Scenarios Desperados presents are far from cliché. Situations are quite original but also familiar with a nice vibe of Wild West. I say vibe because here you will fight not only in small frontier towns, but also in creepy swamps, riverbanks and even in sprawling modern cities. Here you can choose between non-lethal and deadly attacks, meaning that you can finish the game without killing anyone. I have no idea why you may do that, it's, it's boring. I live my real life without killing anyone. Why should I do the same where I am allowed to snap a neck or two? For example, I am against hunting for fun, but I play the hunter and I slaughter all the animals in the forest for pure entertainment. You know why? Because they are not real. Duh. Anyway, Desperados 3 is like an old good Commandos game, but modern with amazing visuals and great quality overall. Dishonored 1 and 2. In these now classic games, you are playing as an assassin who is given supernatural abilities by a mysterious entity. Dishonored is a stealth game, although you can play it as a brute force lover as well. You just have to be way better with controls, because fighting multiple enemies is a real challenge here, and only the best of us can dance around the danger like that. The real fun of Dishonored comes in combining all your powers with your weapons and finding your own way through a semi-open world environment. You probably already know the fact, but interesting thing is that the genre the genre of Dishonored is whale punk, a subgenre of steampunk where most of the energy is gathered from the hunted whales and their fat. Not a safe place for your mama. Tainted Grail Conquest this is a unique, infinitely replayable, story-driven hybrid between a deck-building roguelite and an RPG game. Here you will explore the ever-changing maps, fight with deadly enemies and learn what happened to the cursed island of Avalon. You will find 9 unique hero classes, 460 cards, 340 passive skills, 50 masteries and a lot of other stuff you don't really care to hear about right now if you never play the game. I can say one thing for sure, it's a dark fantasy game with all the dark benefits of it. Original monsters and beasts creepy adversaries and fun gameplay await you here. About 90% of the reviews are positive, so it's safe to say that there is a huge chance that you will like the game if you like the genre. People on Steam are saying that this game is gritty, gnarly, dark and worth your money even when it's not on sale. Journey to the Savage Planet As the newest recruit of Kindred Aerospace, the fourth best interstellar space exploration company, your job is to find out if this planet is suitable for humans. Well, honestly, probably not. Not at all, but you don't know that yet, and yet, here you are. You can play it alone or with a friend. Of course, you probably don't have one, so alone it is. This game may look like it's made for kids, but it's not. It has references of alien drugs and some more adult themes I don't think I can talk about if I want to stay monetized, but people are saying that the game has really great humor, awesome design of animals and plants, and really fun tools to use. Although some of the players are complaining that the game gave them headaches. Like, real headaches. Probably from oversaturated colors and lots of movement, so keep that in mind if you are a bit more sensitive person. Gears Tactics the game easily stands in one line with XCOM titles in a sense of quality and provided entertainment. Great graphics, cinematics and really interesting encounters had me pinned on my chair for hours and hours. Usually when I install turn-based games I get bored really quickly either because the game seems too simple, too boring or just too hard. But for me Gears Tactics is in the perfect Goldilocks zone in terms of difficulty and fun and it kept my interest alive for hours. I can assure you that the quality of this game is as high as possible but I have to stress out that I am a casual player. I don't like very difficult games, so if you are a true professional of turn-based titles, it may not be for you. But on the other hand, I could even recommend this game for people who have never played any turn-based games. Gears Tactics may become a gateway drug for you. You know, like potato salad can become a gateway to the world of other salads. Anyway, for me this game rocks and rolls and is great in general like the best Dr. Sausage in the juiciest potato salad. Ghost Runner 
This is a hardcore slasher packed with lightning fast action set in a grim cyberpunk mega structure. He will climb Dharma Tower, humanity's last shelter after a world ending cataclysm. You will have to make your way up from the very bottom to the very top to confront the tyrannical Keymaster. The streets of this tower city is full of violence. Evil Keymaster rules with an iron fist and little regard for human life. If you like Shadow Warrior and especially Doom Eternal, there is a juicy chance that you will enjoy Ghost Runner as well. Green Hell Game feels like Wrath, The Forest and Far Cry Primal had a baby. And very positive reviews are saying to us that this baby is not ugly and you shouldn't give up it for adoption. This time. Here you are left alone in a jungle without any food or equipment, trying to survive and find your way out. Clinging to life you have to go on a journey of durability, as the effects of solitude wear heavy not only on your body but also on the mind. How long can you survive against the dangers of the unknown? Knowing you? <laughs> probably probably not very long. So here, constantly threatened by the jungle, you'll fight with both wild animals and tropical illnesses. You'll also have to face the trap set by your own mind and fears that crawl out of the darkness of the endless jungle. Enjoy the game alone or with friends. Hand of Fate 2. This is a dungeon crawler set in a dark fantasy world. He will try to master a living board game, where every stage of the adventure is drawn from a deck of legendary encounters chosen by you. So choose wisely your opponent. The enigmatic dealer will try to make you feel helpless and pathetic. People on Steam are saying that the combat is a bit clunky, but the atmosphere, art style and the narration of the game makes Hand of Fate really enjoyable and fun. Although keep in mind that the game is kinda difficult, also heavily based on luck. You know, it's a card game after all and that may be frustrating if you have an unlucky day when everything falls apart. So before playing, throw a coin into the air three times and try to guess heads or tails. If you'll be correct at least two times, play the game, luck is with you today. And what if this was the last drop of luck? What if guessing heads or tails right was the luckiest thing that happened today? Well in this instance I'll think you'll know that you are screwed right away. Game is not forgiving. Soma Ye will explore an abandoned underwater facility in the bottom of the ocean. You don't know what happened here, where everybody is and what is your purpose. Although soon enough you will find out that you are not alone here. You will walk through creepy corridors, experience weird paranormal events and all the time feel the hundreds of meters of water above you. And not everybody you'll meet on this journey will be willing to give you a direction or two. Most of the inhabitants will be willing to make a potato salad out of you instead, so be careful. If you played any amnesia game, be aware that some Soma's gameplay is basically the same, just set in absolutely different place. Soma has a great story, cool ending and is a masterpiece in general. In Sound Mind this is a survival horror where you will experience a series of haunting memories. You will take on a journey through a progression of unsettling stories, each with unique puzzles, mechanics, weapons and boss fights. Basically here you play as a town therapist and dive into the strange worlds of your patients. The game is a bit scary and plays as a psychological thriller. All the levels are unique and all of them hold a certain ominous atmosphere, so it will definitely grow some hair on your mental balls. People on Steam are saying that almost nobody expected the game to be this good for this Price, and I totally recommend it for you as well. So to spice up your curiosity, I will tell you that here you can kill with your thoughts. That should really grab your attention. If it grabs somewhere else, call the police. Inculinati is an ink-based strategy game straight from medieval manuscripts where a thought can be deadlier than a sword. You will take your turn in Inculinati duels filled with unexpected tactical depth and humor. Yeah, fart humor, very funny, haha. -ha. Shut up, that is always funny. You'll embark on an ever-changing journey, build your own bestiary, defeat Meet medieval superstars and collect perks to unleash special powers. And now it's the time when you must subscribe. It's the law, I have nothing to do with that. The penalty of not subscribing to my channel is a ban from Boobhala after you die. It's terrible, I know, so I guess you have to subscribe. Jurassic World Evolution 2 here you can build your very own Jurassic Park just like in the first part, but a bit more beautiful, fancier and a bit better. You know that number at the end of the game's name has to mean something, and it means more species of dinosaurs as well, like at least two. So at first it's all about fun, interesting creatures and happy customers, until some brown substance from the bottom of Beerosaurus hits the fan. And by that I mean that life always finds the way, and that is kinda the opposite of life for everyone else in your park. 
you may think that the raptors will escape the cage and will start feasting on your customers, but the reality is way more cruel. There's almost no way that the first human eaten in your beautiful park by a potato raptor would be just a terrible accident. You know, the fault of cheap fence or stupid worker forgetting to close the gates. Nah, it will be you. You will save the game and then let the creatures go. Because after a while, you will get bored. And only blood can entertain you. <laughs> Inscription. This is a card-based odyssey that blends the deck-building roguelike, escape room-style puzzles and psychological horror into a well-mixed Bloody Mary. You'll acquire a deck of woodland creature cards by draft, surgery and self-mutilation, unlock the secrets lurking behind the walls of a mysterious cabin and embark on an unexpected and deeply disturbing adventure. So don't play this game with your little kids or something. Anyway, overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam are well-deserved, this game is a real gem. Also, if you are in doubt, you can play the free demo version. Journey this is a very different game if you compare it to anything else in the gaming world. Here you will have to traverse the desert, learn the fate of ancients and dive into dangerous ruins. Or not dangerous, just beautiful. You can't fight here. Running away is also not an option. If you encounter an enemy, the only way for you to survive is to hide. But don't worry, this is not some hide and seek game. Enemies are very rare. The thing you will do mostly here is traveling. You will be on a journey. It's a relaxing game. You don't need almost any skills to finish it. It's just a beautiful adventure with amazing visuals and you have all my recommendations. Imagine, my mother is 65 years old and she finished the game on her PlayStation 4 without any help from a side. This game suits everyone. A little nightmares. This is one of the best side-scrolling games I have ever played. Its dark and vicious atmosphere, strange creatures and grotesque world kept my attention for many hours. You'll help the protagonist to escape the Maw, a vast, mysterious vessel inhabited by scary corrupted souls looking for their next meal. Not as scary as pineapple in the potato salad, but still, kinda terrifying. As you progress on your journey, you explore the most disturbing dollhouse playground full of secrets to discover. You'll reconnect with your inner child to unleash your imagination and find the way out. Creepy vibes guaranteed. Iron Marines well, it's hard to introduce this game somehow differently than as a flat 2D Starcraft. And you know what? It's great! The art style may look very familiar to some of you because the game is made by the same developers of Kingdom Rush. As I always say, one of the best tower defense games ever made. So he will recruit and train the greatest heroes in the galaxy, lead them into dangerous missions against near impossible odds and unleash their mighty powers and abilities. In short, you will get 21 campaign missions across 3 different worlds and each mission will require new tactics and actions to achieve victory. You will have to defeat unique bosses and control 14 different heroes. Game allows you to choose from several difficulty modes, meaning that it can be enjoyed either by noobs or by veterans of the genre. Game is quite funny, filled with easter eggs and more than 70 achievements for you to unlock. People on Steam are saying that if you want to play something like StarCraft but don't want to fry your brain while doing that, Iron Marines is the next best thing. Game has a very positive review score, so this may very very well be what you were looking for after all. Expeditions Viking. Game description says, a small band of Norse warriors lands on the shores of England. History may have forgotten their names, but their actions live on. Well, as I always say, the actions Vikings made in real life England involved a lot of pillaging and other crimes, like, you know, killing. So romantic and songs worthy. Anyway, he has the newly appointed chieftain of a modest Viking clan, you'll have a village of your very own. But to carve your name into the rune stones of history, you'll need great strength and great wealth to grow your village's prosperity. There is little left to be gained from the Norse lands, and so you must set your sights on the seas to the west, where tales speak of a great island filled with treasure and slaves ready for the taking. Game has a very positive review score on Steam, but there are also quite a few comments saying that the game is a bit too slow. You know, just like your sister. Mass Effect Legendary Edition Recently I watched my wife playing it. She's a great fan of the franchise, she even finished Andromeda. I couldn't. So what I gathered is that this is still an awesome game. Well, three remastered games in one, but the graphics of the first part are still morally old. So don't expect miracles, these are all the games with not so fancy overhaul as Crysis franchise. First Mass Effect was released in 2007, so really long time ago. Anyway, if you like science fiction space operas, Mass Effect is one of the best there is. It has a great plot, many twisted turns of events, mystery 
space on every corner, giant robots, giant spaceships and giant space stations, everything is giant here. It's also full of great characters as well, and it has about 90% of positive reviews on Steam. By buying Legendary Edition you will get all three remastered Mass Effect games with all the DLCs and other stuff included and remade in one huge game. Medieval Dynasty here you take on the role of a young man who has fled from war and wants to take his faith in his own hands. From being alone, inexperienced and poor, he will develop into a master of many skills, a leader of community and the founder of a prosperous dynasty. Dynasty which is meant to last and prosper for generations to come. So you can create a tiny medieval North Korea for yourself and thrive, while your friends eat grass. You will defend against wild animals, hunt for food, gather resources, craft equipment, build yourself a house and become a founder of a whole village. Tough winters and unexpected events will challenge your skills and dexterity as you strive to build your own legacy. One of the coolest things for me here is the entire year cycle, with four seasons and realistic wildlife that really helps with the immersion. Prey the game has a really cool story that has you playing as a scientist exploring a place infested by an alien life form. Yeah, I bet you heard that somewhere. If you dozen, hundred, million times. Despite that, aliens are really nice here. Well, by saying nice, I mean that they are the opposite of nice. You wouldn't want to chat with them about video games or best beer kinds in the universe or, you know, the best recipe for potato salad. No, they are terrifying creatures. Although, as I always say, not as terrifying as people who put pineapple in potato salad. Those are the worst. Just imagine this space station filled with them. Prey is a thriller, but that tiny change would make it one of the scariest horror games games ever. So anyway, Prey gives you a variety of weapons to use along with superpowers like telepathy or the ability to trick enemies by turning yourself into everyday items. Yeah, it may sound like nonsense, but it's not. You can truly acquire alien abilities and use them by stopping time or turning yourself into a bottle of beer and then you can roll around like crazy. N not suspicious at all. Well, this ability of turning yourself into a stuff could probably spice up the love life of you and your wife or imaginary girlfriend. I, I don't judge. but. First you have to defeat the space evil and escape from the space station alive. And with all the parts intact needed for, you know, spiciness. Elden Ring open world where you will be doing a lot of slashing, bashing and rolling around. Game is Souls-like, if I can say that about almost a sequel to the actual Dark Souls and themed around dark fantasy. It has the ability for you to create your own custom characters instead of playing a fixed protagonist. So you can create a character that you may want to immersively merge in with or a character that you wish to be or to bang. Honestly, I don't like Dark Souls because I suck as a gamer, but I bought the Elden Ring and I played for hours and hours. I died a lot and the amount of deaths finally filled my cup of patience and I abandoned it. Now I'm really thinking that I must go back and show all these creepy creatures who the real boss is. Probably not me, but I will try to perform an exorcism session on my noobness, just as my long dead grandmother usually yelled at me. I will not translate that. Thank you for watching and you will find more Steam sale videos in my channel. Don't miss them out. Also tomorrow I will upload another video, then another, then another and so on. So subscribe, don't miss any of them. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye.